Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of FTC Java Shorts. My name is Hunter Cooperman, and I'm one of the programmers on the Penguineers. And today we're going to be talking about using methods to improve your FTC programs, especially your autonomous. So the first thing we kind of need to cover is, well, what is a method? So a method basically allows you to condense a big chunk of code straight down into one line. So it's kind of like a my block if you were ever involved in FLL. And so, you know, kind of what would we use a method for? Well, probably the simplest example and the one that it's probably most commonly used for in this context is in autonomous mode. So let's say that you're moving forward, right? Let's say you move forward for a specific amount of time. That's something that you might do quite frequently on autonomous. Well, if you're doing it in Java, you would need to set all the motors to a certain power, and then you need to sleep for a period of time, and then maybe, you know, set all those motors to zero power at the end. And so that ends up being a, a ton of code. You know, if you have four motors, that's four to set the power, four to stop it, plus an additional to sleep. So you're ending up writing nine lines of code every single time you want to move straight. And that makes your code basically unreadable and hard for the judges to understand. Plus you're kind of repeating yourself a lot. And generally when you code, you want to follow dry, which means don't repeat yourself. And so instead of doing all of this, what you can do is you can write a method that would say, you know, be move forward. And then in parentheses, you would say the speed and the amount of time and that way you can condense it all into one simple line of code. Alrighty, so how do you actually go about writing a method? Well, a method definition has a couple of parts. The first thing is going to be any modifiers for the method. So this is gonna be stuff like public, private, static, final, anything like that. And following the modifiers, you're going to have the return type of the method. So a method can actually return a value like an integer or a Boolean or a string. And so you would define that right there. And following those two, you're just gonna put the name of the method. Now we're actually gonna be covering the modifiers and the return type in a separate second video because we're splitting methods into two parts. So just don't worry about those two right now. But what I do want you to worry about is the method name. And after that is going to come the parameters for the method in parentheses. So just like a method can return a value, it can also intake one. And this can be anything from like a number or a string or it can be a data structure like an array or a list. And so you're gonna define what you want to intake in the parentheses and we call those parameters. And then you can use them in the rest of the method. And after your parameters, you're just going to put curly brackets and then a curly bracket at the bottom. And in between, you're just gonna write all of the code that you would normally include in the method. And so once you've defined your method, you can actually use it in your code. And basically what you need to do for that is you're just going to put the name of the method. And then in parentheses, you're going to put on um, the actual parameters that you want for that particular instance of the method. So if I intake an integer as a parameter, I might just put, you know, the number one, that would be a valid a parameter, and then just a semicolon at the end. And what this is gonna do is this is basically going to just reference all of the code back down in your method definition, so you don't have to rewrite it every time. So now that we've gone over how to define a method, let's go ahead and just write one. Here's a basic autonomous mode I wrote. So we basically have a couple of hardware things, and then during the actual autonomous period, we go forward at a slower speed for one and a quarter seconds. We do a quick break to prevent coasting, then we go backwards at a faster speed for half a second and stop all the motors. And so really, if you look at this code, we're actually doing really two motions. We are going forward and then we are going backwards. But doing those two motions based on the way that we wrote this takes about 30 lines of code if you're including white space from 26 all the way to 58. And quite frankly, this code is also just unreadable. I know if I walked up and I hadn't written this code, it would be incredibly confusing for me to tell, you know, what this programmer was trying to do. Even with the comments, it's a little difficult for me to figure out what's actually going on in the field. And this would be especially true if you have an autonomous that instead of having two motions has five or 10 and some of them are turning, then it just becomes incredibly difficult to figure out what's going on. So this is the perfect time to use a method to make your code shorter, more readable, and more easy to manage, while also practicing just better programming practices in general. So what I'm thinking is we have one method that intakes a speed and an amount of time, and it can go either forward or backwards. And then at the end, it also includes a little part to break to prevent coasting, that way we're not repeating it every time. So when you're writing a method, you typically want to write it down at the bottom before the last curly bracket and essentially after everything else. So we're gonna go down a couple of spaces and we're also going to be using the public void modifier and return type. Again, we're going to be covering that in a different video, so don't worry about that for right now. Now we need to give our method a nice descriptive name. When you're writing a name for a method, it should be descriptive enough that you don't even need to comment the code where you're using the method. And while I certainly don't condone not writing any comments, your code will be impossible for anyone else to read, you should think carefully about the name you give your method. So we're just gonna name it something simple and accurate, like move straight. 
Now we're going to do our parentheses and our curly brackets. And now we need to deal with the parameters for the method. So this method is going to be intaking two parameters. It's going to be intaking the speed. And that's going to be a decimal, so I'll initialize it as a double, and I'll give it a nice name like speed. We're also going to be intaking the amount of time that we're waiting. I'll keep my time in milliseconds, and I'll just initialize it as an integer to keep it simple. I'll also give it a nice name like wait milliseconds. And from here, the last thing we need to do is we just need to give our method the body. Lucky for us, we've already written all the code that goes in the method, twice in fact. So I can just copy paste it from up here, and we can just change what we need to change. Instead of going forward, we're going to be going straight, which doesn't necessarily mean forward. And instead of going at the set 35% speed, we're going to be going at the speed parameter that's inputted into the method. So we can replace all of these with speed, and we can just use it like a variable within the method. It's the same deal with the sleep time. We're going to be using the wait milliseconds parameter as well. Now we don't need to change anything down here because this is going to be consistent no matter what the parameters are. So we can leave this as is. And so now that we've created our method, all we need to do is just go up and use it. So here we go forward and we break. So what we're going to be doing is we're going forward at 35% power. So let's use our method, move straight. And for our speed, we'll do 35% power. And our time, we'll do 1,250 milliseconds. And add a semicolon at the end. And it's that easy. And now we can delete this whole big chunk of code. And we can do the exact same thing for going backwards as well. So we're going to say move straight. And here we're just going to input our speed as negative 0.65. And we're going to be waiting for half a second. And we actually can also delete the part where we stop all the motors as well, because if you look at the end of the method, the last thing we do is we stop all the motors. And so now if you look at our autonomous mode, you'll notice that we reduced all those 30 lines just to five lines, and only two of them are actual code. In addition, it's also really easy to tell what's going on because our method literally tells you we're just moving straight. And if we want to figure out what these values are, then we can just scroll down to the method definition and figure it out pretty easily because we've given them such useful names. If you want to make your code even easier to read, you can comment your methods in the javadoc format. I won't explain that now, but basically it's useful because it lets you generate HTML documents which explain your methods. And so now that we've written this entire method, let's go ahead and quickly build the program. And now let's head over to the robot. Alrighty, so here we are with our autonomous mode. I'm going to go ahead and initialize it and play it. And there we go, it moved forward slower, backwards faster, exactly like we wanted it to, and we only ended up writing two lines of code. Alrighty guys, so that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to show off the basic idea of how methods work, and in the next video we're going to be talking about how you can use the modifiers and the return type to make more powerful methods that return different values. So until then, thank you for watching, and remember to subscribe.